So this is a nice, refreshing contrast there, reflecting on an Ireland win, an Ireland away win, uh, an Ireland victory coming from behind. The first time that's happened since 2013, Noel King, caretaker stint against Kazakhstan. Maybe the better comparison is uh, the away game against Kazakhstan the year before, Kevin Doyle's late goals. Um, that was a little bit of a smash and grab vibe. I mean, that was a dramatic smash and grab, actually. This a little bit different, um, but it had some of those qualities. Um, my match report, my analysis piece is on the 63 seconds. I mean, if Benjamin Kalman's header goes in, um, we're reflecting on a 2-1 defeat and probably asking some stern questions, but you know, the corner has to be turned somehow. And I think, to be fair to Ireland, there is an element of fortune favouring the brave. Um, they did go for the win. There is no doubt about that. Um, there may be moments in the second half where they were caught out as a consequence of that. But um, I think the bigger picture from this game um, for the manager is just tasting a win. It doesn't. It almost doesn't matter how they got there. I think you look at that dressing room. You look at some of the younger players. Um, with the exception of those who played against Scotland in that game in 2022, um, all they've known is disappointment. All they've known is narrow defeats. There's been a lot of 2-1 losses. There's been, I suppose, potential wins that turned into draws or draws that turned into losses. And um, we've never really had too much time to uh, analyse how they can build on a victory. It's generally been responding to setbacks. Um, so I think that's... That's the big positive. I think, you know, Hamer afterwards, um, I think he was quite realistic in his assessment. He wasn't saying this was some wonderful performance. He said it was a, a Jekyll and Hyde display. He admitted that there were parts of the performance that weren't good. Um, I think he, he spoke about how they needed to play with a quicker temper after half time, and they did. Um, there obviously will be a little bit of concern about maybe uh, a little bit of a loss of control at one all. And as I said, there was big chances for Finland um, and Greece on Sunday. It's clearly going to be a much more difficult game, and they've beaten England, so it's still you know it's still a challenge to sort of end this week on a high. But I think you have to you have to from an Irish perspective look on the the glass half full side of it. It's a victory, uh, the threat of relegation to League C. You would have to imagine that this group could avoid it now. Um, you know that would be costly for for sort of what's coming down the tracks, uh, and maybe there is a sense that for the rest of the year now with that victory under the belt. Uh, Hal Grimson and the staff can learn a little bit more about the players. Um, I, I didn't like the experimental line before it, but these matches do matter. But I think you know, it's going to be hard for Ireland to probably affect their seeding positively now. Um, but at least the, the worst case scenario of that uh, relegation, you would think, um, can be avoided. So, yeah, maybe there's maybe there's some positive signs. I mean, Festi Abiselli off the bench, Robbie Brady justifying his, his recall, Liam Scales. Uh, grew into it. Nathan Collins, obviously, I mean, he had that nightmare mistake. It's obviously stating the obvious to say it's a, it's a concern. Uh, and there were still, as I said, little, one or two little worrying moments at the back and, and mistakes that will be punished by a better side. Um, but still, um, the bar has been set very low. We've reflected on a lot of bad nights. Uh, where do we go from here? I guess from here, uh, the Irish group will be hoping that they will remember Helsinki in this weird sort of gymnasium uh, underneath the stadium where they did their interviews as maybe a place where they finally got the chance to uh, start talking about a new story.